what's up guys welcome back to the channel uh last episode you seen me get all this stuff put back together and then i was getting ready to take a ride on it and it just kept dying on me well i got tired of kicking the damn thing so uh, i put my spark tester on it it doesn't look like it was getting any spark um if you look over here i went ahead and i had i had already put like new points and condenser and everything in here is all brand new so hopefully all that stuff is still good so i'm assuming this coil just took a dump um, it's got a really old coil on it uh, when the ignition is on there's power with the coil there's power with the points so everything looks good everything seems to be there it's just not putting out any spark so i'm gonna go ahead and get a coil and uh we'll try to put a coil on it today and we'll finish this series up for you guys so stay tuned for that here we go All right, so here's the old coil. Uh, she's pretty old. It's been on there for a while. Uh, here's a new power from a, or a new coil from Twin Power High Performance Ignition Coil. We're gonna give this a shot today, and hopefully that solves our no spark issue. So let's uh, swap this out. Pretty simple uh, install here. Let's put our wire back on there. Need like a three eighths or something for the two nuts here. Make sure you have extra long ratchet for small nuts. <laughs> that way you just, you know, you just break the stud off in there, you know. Yeah, hopefully this solves my issue and I can go ride this some bitch today because it's been, it's been too long. Oh, FedEx, the green one. <laughs> of course, it's gonna ruin the damn video. I have to edit that out now. <laughs> You're probably not even here for me. Okay, I got both wires off here. Uh, there's a wire on the bottom, a wire on the top, and then it looks like there's two 7 16 bolts here. I think I've swapped this coil once with another one a long time ago, but we're doing it again, so. One of them's hard to get to, one of them's easy to get to. Yeah, it's typically, uh, every time I want to ride this thing, something's wrong with it, but. <laughs> She's kind of old, so. Some of the parts still are original on it, and some of them, a lot of it's been replaced. But. She's far from perfect. I wish I had, you know, ten or fifteen thousand dollars I could throw into it, and, but I don't. All right, there's one bolt. I'll probably leave that one just dangling in there so it's not flopping around. Let's try and get this bottom one off. Okay, there's the old coil. This is an old school coil too. Early, uh, early style. It's 
It's got a nice crack in it too. <laughs> yeah, if you leave your ignition on, this is getting straight 12 volts from the battery. If you leave them on for a long time without them uh, discharging the voltage, it can swell them up, it can overheat the coil, uh, do some damage to the coils. So when you got a kickstart bike, you want to make sure she's tuned right to where it starts quickly. But I've been having trouble getting this thing started. Ooh, it's chrome. So there's our coil. Pretty similar. I mean, it's the same thing pretty much, except for the posts are on the sides instead of on the top and the bottom. But relatively the same thing. So we'll get her bolted up here. All right, we're gonna put this new one on here. Let's get her going. This coil was uh, pretty inexpensive. I think it was like, I don't know, 50, 60 bucks. Um, I just ordered it from uh, JP Cycles. They had it in stock, so. We'll give it a shot. Hopefully this uh, makes her fire up, man. So I'd like to ride this baby. Okay. All right, when all else fails, extremely long extension. <laughs> it might just barely work. I hope. Oh, no, it's not working now. <laughs> was now it's not okay I got the uh, coil tightened down let's uh, slap these wires on and see if this thing will crank up no <laughs> come on baby get in there There we go. <laughs> and then I dropped the little tiny baby washer somewhere. There it is. Yeah, if you own one of these old shovel heads or any old bike for that matter, I mean, you better be a mechanic because there's not a whole lot of people out there that still work on them or even want to work on them, so. I don't know. Of course, these are going to be a different size. You know? <laughs> yeah, you better be a mechanic because not only is it hard to find somebody to work on them, it's also really expensive to have somebody work on them. So. Okay, let me give these a little tickle here with this extra long ratchet. <laughs> there we go. Rear cylinder on the bottom, front cylinder on the top. Okay, theoretically this baby should freaking run now, I hope. So let me get ready and uh, we'll try and fire it up. Okay, moment of truth. Is it gonna run or is it gonna do the same shit? There might be a problem with this ignition switch. I've had problems with these switches. They're aftermarket switches. Uh, boy, they just don't make things like they used to. 
That's for sure. But hopefully she'll run today. catch a lick right there strange I wonder if it's the switch something's going on because it'll intermittently start and then intermittently not start so I don't really know if there's something up with this switch we can try it with the headlight on that's in a different position so maybe it'll go then I should have putted by now. Yeah, nothing, see? Weird. So maybe there's a problem with that condenser down there, which would be odd because it's all brand new inside there. And I know I got a point gap, I already checked that. 18 thou. So I'm wondering if it's this switch. Don't know. So I'm going to do a little bit more diagnosing, see what I can't figure out. Yeah, that's fine. It is? Uh -huh. It did one. There it goes again. Alright guys, I got, I got that coil on there. As you guys seen, I was trying to get her kick started up, uh, but she wouldn't go. So what was happening is... Pulled the plugs out. The plugs are soaked with fuel. Um, I looked down at the cylinders. The cylinders are just saturated with fuel. Uh, so I'm thinking there's probably something going on with this uh, Super E carb. I know they're kind of particular when there's dirt gets in them. They don't like dirt or any debris in there. Uh, and I haven't had this thing off and cleaned in a few years. And this thing sat for like, I don't know, eight or nine months or even longer. I don't know. It's almost been like a year now. So I'm probably going to pull the carb and uh take a look at that open it up get a carb kit clean it and we'll see how that works out maybe the float's sticking or something not too sure uh so there's three bolts here for this cover take that off we'll get the throttle cable disconnected and then there's two bolts on the back and then the carb rate will just slide right off it's pretty simple and the carb bracket so uh i'll uh get back to you guys once i get this thing on the bench and we'll go ahead and disassemble it Okay, I got my little table out. I got the carburetor right here. Uh, this is the basic carburetor kit uh, that you can get for it. Uh, it's like 40 bucks or something, 35, 40 bucks. Uh, and it's just the basic kit. It only comes with the gaskets and the float needle and a few rent, maybe the accelerator pump. Uh, a few years ago, I had put a, I bought this master kit, uh, and that's the part number for the master kit, uh, SNS. Uh, this one comes with everything for the carburetor screws uh, i mean we're talking everything so uh, i might try and put this new plate and throttle shaft in uh because i didn't do it last time because it, it didn't have any like slop in it but i can feel a little bit of play in this uh shaft here now so i might it's hard to see but uh, there is some slop in there, so I might pull this shaft out, put the new shaft in, put the new butterfly in, get this thing all cleaned up. Uh, so let me get the camera set up, and uh, I'll get this thing tearing apart for you guys. Okay, if you're ever unfamiliar with your carburetor, your idle mixture screw, I always run them in, count the turns. That way you know where you were at, and you can kind of get it back in the same area. So let's do that now. There's a half. There's one. It was like one and a half, so that's good enough for me. Let's pull this out. She got some carbon in there. That's from idling. 
And you can see where I ran it in and she touched. All right, let's go ahead and pull our uh, accelerator pump housing off. Hope you guys are all doing good out there and enjoying yourself as usual. This screwdriver I got sucks, so it's time for a bigger one. <sighs> God damn. Sucker was tight, man. Mm. Give that the old tap -a rooney Yeah, I can already see that there is a bunch of gunk in here. Uh, I don't know if you guys can see it on the camera or not. <laughs> but, uh... Yeah, there's definitely some gunk in here. So that's probably what's going on with her. Two check balls just fell out. Do not lose your check balls. Uh, I believe those, one went in here, one went in there. We've got these little tiny blue O-rings. There's a little spring in here as well. Don't lose the little spring. Two O-rings and a little spring. There's your little spring. Okay. Yeah, you can definitely see there was there's some gunk in here, guys. Yeah. I don't know if you can see it or not. Let me get some light. That's pretty bad. There's definitely some gunk in here from old gas from sitting around. So that's probably why she's acting a little funny, man. You never you know, you never want to rule, rule out the obvious, as they say. Uh, I try not to, and a lot of the times on projects, I do overlook the obvious. <laughs> and then it ends up, you know, a bunch of frustration and all that good shit. So, yeah, don't overlook the obvious, folks. So let's get this bowl off of here. get her split open we'll take a look at everything okay do not forget this o-ring if you forget this o-ring uh, you'll have all kinds of mixture problems uh, bad things will happen this one looks really flat too like she's been in there for a while so it could have been bypassing that. This is probably why she was running weird. So we need to make sure we uh, leave that there. So we remember to put the new one in. Here's our float and our needle and seat. Uh, we'll get all that stuff cleaned out here in just a second. But let's go ahead and continue with this. Let's see if we can get this gasket off of here. I probably didn't even need to get a whole rebuild kit. But I just wanted new gaskets because usually stuff tears. But like I, like I had mentioned before, this had been a part um, a few years ago. It's been a while. I also got some new plugs too for it just in case. I haven't put plugs in it in a long time. And they always say, them shovel heads foul out plugs. You know, so... <laughs> All right, there's our gasket. I got a new one of those. Um, over here, I'm pretty sure this is our high-speed main jet. Um, I am pretty sure, don't quote me on this, but I think this is your low speed and that's your intermediate jet, or it could be flipped. <laughs> uh, so you can look it up. Uh, but those are your jets there and th all of those are changeable to tune your bike so whatever whatever the case may be I think I got like a is a 74 thousandths main jet in that baby there so all right uh, there's an o-ring here I believe this kit came with two new o-rings for those I don't know if it came with one for this spacer this one still feels pretty good so I'm not worried about that but we are going to change this one in here if I can get it out. Uh, 
I'll probably need a smaller pick. Bear with me. Okay, smaller pick. You gotta get that baby down in there, man. That o ring is in there. Yeah, she probably needs a new one, so. Alright, this is your enrichment valve right here. Um, I should probably take that apart, take a look at it, make sure nothing's wrong in there. I just want to disassemble this whole thing, take all the jets out. We're gonna make sure this baby's clean. Ugh. Dang it. Oh, dang it. She's tight, folks. She is tight. Tight like you want it. Ugh. There we go. Dang, look at all this white crap on there. Old gas. So, yeah, she was definitely having some problems here, folks. But we're going to fix her up, man. She's going to be... She gonna be good as new. All right, let's take our enrincher out. It is dirty too, man. We gotta clean this thing up. Brush all this stuff off. Okay. Uh, uh, let's see, next. We can go ahead and pull our jets. We might as well. And take all this stuff out. Make sure our jets are clean. I can almost bet you it was this stupid freaking O-rings that bypass. And lets fuel in when it's not supposed to be letting in. And this thing, too, the accelerator pump, I swear this was bypassing. Because uh, when I wasn't holding the throttle, I could see fuel squirting out of the squirter. Uh... So that's how I know that was probably bypassing. This right here is your squirter. It has a little tiny, tiny little slit in it. And that's what squirts. Uh, so I bet you that might even be a little clogged up. We're going to take that out, blow it all out, clean it all up, and find out what's going on. Um, you see, we got some carbon in here. You know, she's a little dirty. But, like I said, she hasn't been off in a few years, so. All right, let's pull this low-speed jet out. Uh, you can also get jet kits for this thing. They're not super expensive, but I would only, only if you need them. Okay, there's our low-speed. It looks good. Nothing clogged in there. I can see through it. She looks good. Let's go ahead and try and pull this next one out. Make sure there's nothing going on underneath here. And this thing is pretty much disassembled. Except for this throttle shaft, which I think I'm going to go ahead and replace it. So we got a 31 thousandths. Uh, um, I think this is the intermediate jet. Which one is this? This is a 40 thousandths. Yeah. So this is probably our low speed jet. This is probably your intermediate jet. I don't know. There's a diagram online if you really want to know. But this one has little tiny orifices in it. Uh, you got to make sure these are all cleaned out, blown out. You don't want anything clogging that crap up. Um, go ahead and pull this out next. Uh, I think not sure if we can get this plunger out of here now probably I think yeah we can just pull it out and then there's a little rubber grommet in here which is actually torn so huh. so we'll put we've got a new one of those put our new grommet in there we'll get all this stuff cleaned up um, that's pretty much it I guess I'll take this uh, main jet tube out. Is it necessary? I don't know, but we're taking it out. It's got a bunch of orifices in it as well. So we need to make sure all this stuff is blown out, cleaned up. And that's pretty much it. So I'll get to doing some cleaning. I'm not really going to show you guys all that. I'm just going to hit everything with some carb cleaner and a brush. 
some compressed air. We're gonna make sure everything's nice and shiny, cleaned up. We'll get all the new parts laid out and uh, we'll get it changed. So that's pretty much it for right now. I'll get back to you guys uh, when I get ready to reassemble it. Okay, here's where I'm at. I went ahead and pulled the uh, old shaft out and the old, uh, you know, the old butterfly, the old throttle plate. Pulled that out. Uh, got the new one going. Got the throttle cable holder on there. Um, get this thing in here. New throttle plate. Uh, right now I'm going to go ahead and pull this uh, float out so I can check this and clean it up. I forgot about this, kind of, so I was going to show you guys this. But I'm pretty sure if you know anything about carburetors, you've seen this before. So, <laughs> uh, There's your float and your needle. Okay, Set that aside. And then we also have our seat in there. So... I'm going to try to pull this out so I can get some air blasted through there, get this thing cleaned out, make sure she's spraying good. Uh, I don't think this kit came with a new seat anyways. It came with a new needle, but uh, yeah, so that's where I'm at. Oh, I can see some water in there too. What? Weird. I might have to drain that gas out and go get some fresh freaking gas. I don't know. There's definitely some water droplets in there. So that's weird, moisture or something, but all right, I'm going to get to cleaning and uh, get back to you guys here in a minute. Okay, it's going smooth. Um, I got the new shaft and throttle plate in there. Uh, she's all cleaned up, nice and shiny in there again. Um, next, I just want to emphasize when you put these screws back in here, Put a dab of a uh, blue Loctite on them. Uh, if these, if this little tiny screw vibrates out and gets sucked into your motor, uh, it will destroy it. <laughs> so <laughs> it's uh, worth putting a dab of Loctite on. Okay, that way, uh, reassurance. You know they're not going to come flying out because this little tiny screw will probably ruin your motor. Same thing on the on air cleaner bolts. Uh, use a little dab of Loctite on the three bolts that hold the air cleaner backing plate on. So, uh, yeah, little tip of the day there for you. So let's screw these down. Make sure they're centered up. I didn't have like a Torx bit, so I just had to use this crappy little <laughs> set right here. Don't over tighten them, just get them snug. They're not gonna come out. Once that Loctite hardens up, it should be good to go. Go ahead and check your throttle, make sure it's free, feels good. So uh, most of that slop is gone now. I think the shaft had a little bit of slop on it got a little ring on it so that's it okay everything is pretty much cleaned up we're gonna go ahead and start here with the float uh, we'll get this opened up of course they taped it up man <laughs> okay here's your bowl drain tube they always give you a new one of those There's our O-rings and check balls. Why are there only two blue O-rings? Oh, there it is. there's the little baby one over there. Okay. And then we got two O-rings. Why do they give us two? There's one for the... I don't know, they give you two of these. I'm not sure what for, I don't know. This one's bigger, so I'm not sure why they give you two. I don't know. I'm not worried about it. And then you have your uh, air cleaner base gasket and our big main gasket right here. So let's uh, get one of these uh, O-rings on here. Might as well. Oh, that one's too big. Oh, this is for a Super G and E. That's right. So it has multiple. We need the Super E O-ring. That's why. 
So that's for the Super G. Okay, there's our new carb gasket. Looks good. It's definitely uh, better than the other one. Another thing too, when you take this shaft out, make sure you clock these springs right because this is your accelerator pump push rod. <clears throat> um, so just make sure you look at it when you take it apart. Uh, I didn't really film it because it was kind of boring and it took me a minute to figure it out too. So <laughs> uh, Let's go ahead and rip this open. Do not lose any of these parts. Just make sure you dump them out on your table. That's why I put rags down on my table so stuff can't roll away. All right, we got our little uh, new accelerator pump boot. That baby just slides in here like this. Pop it on. Eh. Make sure she's down on there good. And then this uh, new uh, push rod pin here and then we got some o-rings those are the two o-rings for uh, this guy and the check ball and then I'm assuming this little one is for uh, our yeah this goes on this goes on here folks do not forget that o-ring if you forget that o-ring <laughs> It'll give you a world of problems, man. You'll be wondering, what the hell is going on my carburetor? There's this little tiny, tiny baby O-ring right here. I mean, it's hecka small. I'm not even sure what that's for because I didn't take it out. It might be for this tube. Or something. I'm not really sure on that. So I'm going to leave that aside for now. Um, so here's our new... Our new needle, you just hook that on here. Pretty simple. So that's ready now. <laughs> and then we have our new accelerator pump boot. Which way does it go? I don't know. <laughs> It also came with a new spring as well for that. So we'll put our new spring in too real quick. Don't lose these check balls. Save your old ones too. Oops. I knocked you guys. Are you guys alright? Oh, you're still there. Yeah, always save your old check balls too just in case you lose one. Because the check balls, I mean, they don't really go bad, I guess. I mean... <laughs> All right, so this looks like the pin hits this, so I'm assuming it goes like this, like that. All right, so I think, I think we can go ahead and assemble our Uh, accelerator pump here. I hope you guys can see okay. Let me turn it around here. This would probably be easier if I laid this in here. Maybe. I don't know. <laughs> check ball spring don't forget your check ball spring put your two check balls in this one should sit on the little spring I'm pretty sure and there was also those two o-rings that go in there and I already screwed this one up <clears throat> get out Yeah, these things are a pain in the ass. Pretty sure the check ball is supposed to sit on the spring. If I can get it in there. Boop. Oh, dang it. Alright, it's sitting in there now. 
put an o-ring in there put the other o-ring in there line her up and then you can put your two short screws in and then you put the long one in later this one goes all the way up through the body of the carburetor so you kind of got to wait to put that one on but you can put this in there oh wait i'm an idiot i didn't put the thing in there <laughs> don't do what i just did I totally didn't put this in there. <laughs> Oops, spring goes down. And this goes on top. <clears throat> How do you know if it's centered up in there? I have no idea. <laughs> I'm assuming it'll sit in there. I'm not sure if you're supposed to squeeze this down in there. Oh, it sits like that. All right, I got it. I got it. I got it. I got it. All right, now she's now she's ready, folks. Put your screws in. Don't lose your check balls now. You got to have your check balls. You know, your check balls. Start these screws, snug these up, and then we'll tighten everything at once. But there you go, your accelerator pump should be ready. So now we can drop our float in here with our needle in there. Boop. And we can test this too by putting some air to that. And it's working. Take your screw, your float uh, hold down screw, get it started. A lot of people I talk to are always afraid to work on carburetors. It's, oops. <laughs> it's just, it's, uh, it's basically just a few little tiny parts. And once you understand it, it's, they're not hard to work on. I mean, they're really not. You just want to make sure all the gaskets and O-rings are good. And you want to make sure they're clean. Carburetors need to be clean, folks. Especially these super ease they don't like dirt all right we can move on to the main body now that was our bowl we got our bowl fixed up we got our accelerator pump rod in there we can go ahead and start reassembling our main jet are you guys still in view here yeah you're good you're good right yeah all right let's put our main jet tube in snug that up don't over tighten stuff this stuff is just brass just a good good and snug let's put our I'm pretty sure this is our 31 thou that's probably our low speed jet so let's put that back in give it a snug don't over tighten your jets either or else you won't be able to get them back out all right, we had our 40 thou jet over here. And then our main jet was our 47 thou jet. And I'm pretty sure everybody's bike runs different. So you kind of have to tune your carburetor to your bike. So yeah, we got, oh yeah, no, this is 74 thou uh, jet, main jet. So thread that in, tighten this down. Make sure your main jet's a little snug. Okay. I think we're pretty much getting there. 
Let's go ahead and put our uh, enrichment valve back in. Slide that baby in. Take our spring. And then just thread that baby back on. Before you tighten it, test it. Make sure she functions. Give that a tightening. <clears throat> Stick our idle jet back in there. You run it down until it stops. And no more, literally. Once it stops, that's it. And then that we had one and a half earlier, right? So we'll take this. We're going to watch our notch. So that's a half. One and a half we'll start there once you get the bike running and warmed up you can tune that to your liking um, same thing with the accelerator pump adjustment there you can play with that every bike's different you know what i mean so you just gotta mess around with it okay let's get our main gasket uh, i believe this can only go on one way like this pretty sure it's kind of weird because it slides over your intermediate jet there and I'm pretty sure that's it do your last check and make sure you're not missing anything I still don't know what that little tiny o-ring is for but I will save it because you never know I don't know <laughs> that's pretty much it for the carburetor rebuild here folks we can go ahead and uh, put our bowl on <clears throat> and we will be finished with this slider in make sure everything lines up make sure there's not really any huge discrepancies in the and the bowl fitment here, I think we're pretty much good to go. Start your one long screw. Start the others. Okay, I'm kind of seeing a spot here where it doesn't want to clamp down quite right. I'm wondering if it's this nozzle running into the gasket in there. I'm pretty sure once we tighten it down, it'll just squeeze in, but you never know. I don't know. I'd hate to ruin that brand new gasket. Got our accelerator pump rod is in there, ready to go. And just run your screws down softly at first, make sure it doesn't feel like the bowl is crooked or anything. And give them a snugging up. They don't have to be super tight, you can always go back and check them later. Alright, I'll say that's pretty much rebuilt. Make sure your float, hear it, she's still free. We can check that too, maybe. Float is operating. Our throttle plate is still operating. Um, everything should be ready to go with this carburetor, guys. That's about it for that. Um, so I'll get it back on the bike and we will test fire it and hopefully she fires up. So let's see what happens. But that's it for your Super E rebuild, guys. Let me know what you think of that in the comments, man. I'd appreciate it. Pretty simple carb to rebuild. So 
All right, that's it. I'll get you guys uh, going here when I get ready to fire this thing up. Okay, guys, I got the bike pushed outside here. It's uh, it's all put back together. The Super E is in there. <laughs> Air cleaner's back on. Oop. And uh, that's pretty much it. So we'll go ahead and test fire it here. Hopefully she'll fire up for us. Let's see what we got. guys that's going to conclude this series for the harley paint and i uh, hope you guys enjoyed that i hope you learned something and uh i'll see you guys in the next episode of whatever i got for you peace out